Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at the Python implementation of stacks and queues using linked lists. So we've seen it in pseudocode, now let's see it in Python. Let's think about stacks again, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but a stack is a pile of stuff. It's last in, first out. So we take from the top and add to the top. Add to the top, take from the top. We'll remind ourselves that we don't need to give a linked list a name that linked lists have no maximum size and the pointer that points to the top of the stack is stack top. And just remind us using a picture, here we go. There is a head pointer but we'll try and avoid using it where possible. If I can make a confession now, all the Python code you guys are seeing, I'm writing myself. I don't look up websites, I don't look in books, I just write it from scratch myself. And I have to admit when I was implementing the stack code, I was cheating a little bit and using the link list modules, insert a node and the head pointer on my first draft on the code and then I realized I was kind of, I don't know, breaching good practice in terms of using the link list modules or methods. The stack modules or methods need to sit on top of those and the stack modules or methods need to be just reliant on themselves. If I rely on a, a, a module from the linked list suite of commands, then if somebody changes that module, my, my code won't work for the stack the same way it should do. So we like this idea of layers in computer science. Have a linked list layer and have a stack layer sitting on top of it, but the code for the stack layer as much as possible needs to be independent from the code from the linked list layer. It's easier for uh, a reader, the next programmer who's going to take over your code to understand how it works as well if you do it like that. Whereas if you're calling modules from the linked list suite of commands as well, it, it just gets very confusing to read. So even though I actually found it really quick and handy in my first draft of writing this code to implement using this, the linked list commands when I redrafted, I realized, no, I've got to be consistent and create a layer between the linked list and the stacks. So let's have a look. How do I check if a stack is empty? I just, I, I have to declare globally that I'm using this stack top, top pointer that's globally av available to all the modules or methods. And if the stack top is equal to null, then the stack is empty. Now we will note that in Python, the word null is represented by none, big N, small o n e. So none is the Python equivalent of the word null that we casually use. So if the stack top is none, then boom, the stack is empty. If the stack top is not equal to null, then there are some values in the stack, so it is, is not empty. How do we print out the values in the stack? So again, because this is Python, we need to indicate that we're using a global variable called stack, that's the global variable called stack top. Then our, we create a new pointer called sprint and sprint points to stack top so it starts at the top of the stack. While sprint is not empty, while, while we haven't got to the end of the list, print out the value in, in stack print and then move the pointer along to the next element in the stack. So that's printing out a stack. We won't normally do that because again that's kind of cheating. We don't want to see all the values in the stack. We should only be able to access the top value adding from and taking away but it's handy to be able to do that. How do we add a value to the stack? Well we know we can only we only need to add to the top of the stack. So we use our stack top pointer again global and we create a new node node x and it gets it's of type list node and it takes two parameters in, it takes the value in that's passed in to stack push and then it's pointing to nothing for the moment. If the stack is empty then stack top points to the new node, node x, otherwise what we say is make the pointer from node x which is null at the moment n now point to what is currently the, on the top of the stack and now let's move that pointer stack top to be pointing to node x. And that's our push. How about our pop? How do we take the top value off? If the stack is empty, we just print out a message saying the stack is empty. Otherwise, what we say is 
in gets the value of um, the value of stack top dot value, and then stack top now gets moved to whatever the top is pointing to. Can I just say as well for this code in particular? In my first draft in, in the Python, instead of doing n equals top value and stack top gets stack top dot pointer, what I had was the linked list delete a node. So I called the function delete a node from the linked list and, and put in the value n that I'm deleting. That was cheating because I was using a linked list module or method call within the stack module or method. So we don't want to overlap the the code like that. For the developer of the stack information, they just need to know how the stack stuff works. The only thing we're taking from the linked list is how we declare a linked list and the head pointer at the very start to point to a stack top. But from, that, from then on, we use our stack variables and stack modules as opposed to the linked list ones. Perfect. How about the top? How do we see what the value is at the top? Well, it's exactly the same as the pop, except the only difference is we don't remove the value. So we just say if stack is empty, say it's empty. Otherwise, n gets the value, the top value, and we just print it out. So we don't, um, we don't move stack top to stack top, top dot pointer. Let's look at our implementation of queues now in Python, and let's see what differences are between the Python implementation and the pseudocode implementation. So we know queues are first in, first out, or FIFO. The first item to join the queue is the first item to be served. We add to the back and we take away from the front. As with stacks, we know that we don't give linked lists a name. The linked list has no max length and we have two pointers. A pointer at the front of the queue is called queue head. A pointer at the back is called queue tail. How do we check if the queue is empty? We need, we need for each of our modules in the queues to indicate that queue head and queue tail are global variables. So every module needs to access them and every module needs to be able to change them. So we say global queue head and global queue tail. We return if queue head is equal to queue tail is equal to none. So if queue head is pointing to nothing and queue tail is pointing to nothing and they're both pointing to each other, which is nothing, then we know there ain't nothing in this queue. How do we print out the value in the queue? Again, we need to global queue head and queue tail. Then we have our pointer called queue print, which starts off pointing to the queue head. And then while queue print is not null, we keep printing out the value that queue print is pointing to, and then incrementing queue print along by saying queue print is now moved to queue print dot pointer. So whatever the current node is pointing to, move it, up, move queue print onto that. And again. With queues, we don't necessarily want to print out the full queue, usually. We don't implement this method, but it's a nice one to see how it's done. How do we add to a queue? Well, this is over two pages. First, as before, we create our global queue head and queue tail. Then the value we're adding to the queue is n. We can see it has a parameter coming in in the definition of the module name, add to queue n. So we create a new node called node x, which is a list node type, and it has value n and pointer to none or null. Once we've done that, we add to the queue one of two ways. If the queue is empty, then we just say queue head and queue tail now point to node x because there's only one element in the list now. It was empty, now we've added one element in and that element is both the back and the front of the queue. Otherwise, what we do is we say, well, where do we add to the queue? We add to the back of the queue. So whatever the tail is pointing to, it is pointing to null at the moment. Now change that to point to node x and then move the pointer back so that q tail now points to node x as well. And because we've declared that as global, that change will affect every other module. q tail will now point to node x. And we know if we go back to the previous slide that node x is pointing to null. So the back of the q will be preserved as being a null. Go forward again. And that's adding to a queue. How about deleting from a queue? It's over two pages again. We globally declare a queue head and queue tail to let the whole program know that we'll be changing these. Um, our, we can create a variable called new node that points to the head of the queue. And then all we do is we say um, delete the queue by simply um, 
saving the value that's at the head of the queue into a variable called n and then change the queue head pointer now to point to the next element in the list which is queue head dot pointer or new node dot pointer or however you want to look at it. So thanks very much, we'll see you on the next episode.